please give me a minute, or twelve, and I don't expect anything in return. Welcome to Calm in the Chaos, where we take a look at some of our social structures that may be getting in the way of following a deeply spiritual life. We live in a transactional culture. It springs from our consumerism base. I pay for an item or a service and I receive that item or service and it spills over into our personal lives and spiritual lives. When someone remembers me on my birthday, I mark my calendar to make sure I remember theirs. A neighbor stops by with a little box of truffles and I reciprocate the following week with some tomatoes from my garden. We try to keep it even so nobody feels as though they're indebted to somebody else. I recently engaged in a discussion with a man who was of the opinion that most poor people are poor because they just didn't have the will to get a job. He also is a proponent of making the United States a Christian nation. I don't share these beliefs. The man with whom I shared the conversation was adamant in his belief that if everyone had the same drive and responsibility level that he had, there would be nobody on welfare. His myopic view of society left my mind filled with a jumble of thoughts. How can we teach compassion? And how can people who want the United States to be a Christian nation not see the irony in their wanting programs such as welfare and immigration to be exclusive and punitive? The answers are, are not for me to understand right now. It's all between that man and God. But to keep my eyes and heart open, God continues to put people in my life who teach me valuable lessons. And one of them is the man who stands outside public market. He hasn't been there for a few weeks and I have included him in my prayers hoping he's safe. He strolls up and down the sidewalk, just north of the year-round farmer's market in my town. Of course, he's hoping for food to be offered to him and money. And I do offer food and sometimes money. My question to him weekly is something like, what can I get for you at market today? Now, we haven't shared our names, but one day I asked him, how he got out here on the streets. And his story is one of many people in our communities. He was employed, he was married, and he had a house, but no medical insurance. And already you can tell where my story's going to go. A serious illness required him to have several surgeries, which not only used up his savings, but he also lost his house, and because of the illness could not return to work. His wife left, and here he is. He receives nearly $800 a month from the government. How can anyone find even a room to rent when you must accumulate a security deposit and the first month's rent while you're trying to stay fed on $800 a month? And so here it is. Here he is. He lives on the streets and is asking others for food. When a person asks us on the street, we have different ways of responding. Some of us may respond with, there but for the grace of God go I, and then give him food to demonstrate how grateful we are that we're not in that situation. Some of us who believe in karma, or what goes around comes around, may give him food because we're paying it forward, hoping that someone would do the same for us when we're in that situation. And some of us may simply see the face of God when we look into his tired eyes. We give him food because it's the right thing to do. It's what we've been taught in scriptures from Jesus. 
maybe we see that this man is put in front of us as a review session for the lessons we learned. The lessons I'm referring to are actually found in several world religions, not just Christianity, giving to the poor, helping those in need, feeding the hungry, many faith paths teach and support these actions. I've heard this in response to giving food and money to unhoused people. Oh, he's just going to use the money for drugs. Okay, it's not my job to judge why or how this guy got where he is. I'm instructed to simply feed, clothe, love, house. That's my job. Or how about this response? Yes, but there are so many people in need. It's overwhelming. How can I give to him and then not to others? I just, I just don't give to anybody. Well, I haven't found the word fair in any of the lessons that I'm talking about. I only hear the word love. And if we struggle with helping just one person, we could remember that starfish story where two friends are walking along a beach where many starfish have been washed ashore. Knowing that the starfish cannot make their own way back to the water and will die on the beach, one of the friends picks up a starfish and gently returns it to the water. She's challenged by her friend who mentions that she can't possibly rescue the massive quantity of starfish, so why bother? And the response is that it mattered to that starfish. The Sanskrit word dana, D-A-N-A, -A, means generosity, donate, giving, and also means the act of cultivating generosity. When we donate or give a gift, Donna teaches us that we do not attach strings to the gift or expect something in return for our generosity. True generosity means I give something of myself to promote another person's life being better for just a bit. Expecting a payback or a tax credit or an equal gift from the recipient is training from our transactional eye for an eye, I don't want to be beholden to anyone training. We can unlearn that training. We can unlearn it. And I think we should. In summary, we have three points. Our generosity can be cultivated. Generosity is not a transactional gesture. And when we accept what is and stop expecting otherwise, we can free ourselves into a place of love where generosity is easier. Reality cannot be changed simply because we don't like it. But when we sit still and allow things to be what they are, we have a better chance of finding peace. When we want something other than what's in front of us, when we think that things should be different from what is happening, when we expect someone to behave or speak differently from what they did, we set up conflict between our egos and reality. Adya Shanti, a spiritual teacher and writer, says, Arguing with reality is a perfect prescription for suffering. I remember a quote from St. Francis. Preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. The gospel is the understanding that God loves us and that we're supposed to love one another, period. There's nothing we can do to step outside the realm of the love of the Great Spirit. 
The infinite divine wants us here, wants us to learn the lessons that can only be learned in mortal form. The holy of holies is part of us, that divine spark that is in each of us. And so, to return to the quote from St. Francis, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary use words, I ask myself, how can I demonstrate the highest level of love to those I meet while going through my day? How can I be the ointment on the wound, the food in the belly, the one who creates space for others to live fully? How can I cultivate my generosity? How can I preach without words? Well, I've just used about 1,330 of them. So I'm going to turn off the God talk and try to just do that. Preach without words. Amen. Let's pray together. God, who is known to us by many names, we come to you with heavy hearts. Watching the news is difficult. We pray for innocent people caught up in the war. We pray for those who have been tortured, captured, and killed. We ask that you rescue the innocents in Gaza, in Jerusalem, in Israel. Send your angels to protect them and help the suffering people know they are not alone. Help us to recognize our own suffering and to grieve fully so we can extend love to others. We come to you as grateful people, grateful for the fullness of the earth's bounty, the beauty in the smallest of actions and creatures. We thank you for life itself and the opportunities we have to create a world that heals instead of hurts, a world that lives in peace instead of in fear, a world that knows no hunger or violence. Hear our private prayers as we whisper them now. Om Shanti 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 Salam Shalom Amen. Our video recommendation today is simply people being generous. May it inspire all of us. Blessings and blessings.